when you're focused on the breath, think of the breath as a whole body process. All the nerves of the body, all the cells of the body are participating in the breathing. And let your awareness spread out to fill the body. This is something of a balancing act. It's one of the reasons why we come to a quiet place like this, with fewer distractions than normal, fewer responsibilities. So you can focus on getting three things together. Your awareness, the whole body, and a feeling of pleasure, a feeling of well-being. When you think of the breath as a whole body process, what kind of breathing would feel good? Nourishing the whole body, soothing it when it needs to be soothed, energizing it when it needs to be energized. And learning to really appreciate that sense of well-being that you can develop just simply through the way you breathe. Allow your awareness to melt down into the body. There was a Zen teacher, Hakuin, had an image. Of, for him, it was curing what he called Zen sickness. When as you're meditating, a lot of the energy goes up into the head and seems to get stuck there. But it's a good image to use, thinking of the, your awareness getting out of the world outside and back down into the body. Think of it being like a big ball of butter on top of your head, and it's going to melt down into the body and saturate everything. And if you're not very alert, you suddenly find yourself off thinking about something else. You will have dropped the whole body awareness and gone someplace else. Or just drop that thought and come back. Because you want to make this your default mode, full body awareness. And we can get, so you can do this while you're sitting in meditation. You want to then get up and walk around for a bit. See if you can maintain that same kind of awareness while you're walking around. because you want to be able to carry this awareness into the rest of your life. And the very various techniques or strategies that you use to get the awareness to be willing to settle into the body. One way is to just go through the different parts of the body and see where there's any tension, allow it to relax. Now don't relax in such a way that you find yourself bending over. Think of it more anything that's pulling you out of good alignment, allow that muscle to relax. You're going to go down the spine, think about straightening the back, go down to the legs, out to the tips of the toes, down the shoulders, down the arms, tips of the fingers. Think of any tension in the head, allowing that to relax. And as you fully occupy the body in this way, you find that the parts of the body that you were using to think have less and less of a foothold. This is an important skill to develop if you're trying to get rid of distracting thoughts or restless thoughts. Because in order to think, in order to maintain a thought, there's going to have to be tension someplace in the body as your marker, as your reminder. as you think a particular thought. This is why mental work really tires the body. You've got markers all over the place, especially if you're having to think about something complex. But now you want to reclaim the body, inhabit it, and breathe through all the markers from past thoughts, the bits of tension that were left behind, and try to be sensitive to any new tension building up. This is one of the main techniques that the Buddha recommends for dealing with restless thoughts, is noticing where there's the tension that goes with the thought and relaxing it. 
And it's a lot easier to see as you, if you've cleaned everything out. It's like wanting to know where today's dust settled in the house. Now, if you've left the house dusty all the time, you won't be able to see which dust is today's dust and which dust is yesterday's, or last week's, or last month's. But if you clean it regularly, you notice, ah, here's the dust from today. Or like the pad out here in front of the cellar. Ordinarily, we sweep in the evening. Tonight, I didn't have time. But that way, we know if any animals have come through. Well, no, oh, this was an animal from last night. They leave tracks behind. So you're just trying to clean out the body as much as you can so that when a new thought comes in, and there's a pattern of attention that goes with it, you can breathe through it. This is a useful technique, especially when the restlessness in the mind comes from a lack of energy. There are basically two types of restlessness, too much energy or too little energy. With too little energy, you don't have the strength to resist thoughts as they just start swarming around from all over the place inside the mind. And so it's good to be able, instead of trying to force them out, to relax around them. Notice that when they come up, there will be some tension. Okay, relax that, relax that, relax that. And the more fully you occupy the present moment like this, the less room they'll have to move in and switch you over to another time frame or another space inside another thought world. You're right here, fully right here. It's almost as if the route to the past or the future is a little tiny tube. And if you make your mind really small, I can go down the tube very easily, but if you make it large, it doesn't fit. Think of being aware of the hand in the hand, the aware of the foot in the foot, your torso in the torso. All too often our idea is that we're up here in our heads, and the head is aware of the other parts of the body. But actually, as you get into the body, you begin to realize that the area of the chest has an awareness of the chest, the area of the hand has an awareness of the hand. That's the kind of awareness you want to get in touch with. Relax into that. Then you begin to see that any other thought that comes up is just a lot of useless or unnecessary effort. So this is how you deal with times when the mind feels tired and thoughts move in because it's tired. You're basically strengthening the mind by getting it back in touch with the body. This is where we're talking today about how when people get really good at concentration, they go to the formless states. They can't stay there. The energy comes from being with the body. I mean, you can stay there for long periods of time, but it gets kind of blurry and weakened. So you have to get back to the body to strengthen the mind, relax all the different patterns of tension in there, and then be on the lookout. If any slight pattern of tension builds up, try to breathe right through it. It's like a spider on a web. The spider's in one spot in the web, but the web is all connected so that the spider can sense. If anything has gotten caught in the web, it knows right where to go. If they have the, say there's a fly or something, then it'll spin a web around it and then go back to its original spot, wait for the next thing. So have your center, the spot where you tend to settle down, but try to spread your range of awareness so it fills the whole body. So you can be sensitive to any other tension that builds up. Of course, you're not spinning a web around it, you're actually trying to de-spin it. In other words, scatter all the the gathering of energy, that have a little energy knot that tends to form in, into the basis for a thought. Scatter that, and then go back to your center. This way you can deal with restlessness that comes from a lack of energy. Now there's the other kind of restlessness where there's too much energy in the mind. 
In cases like that, you say, well, give the mind something else to think about. It's, it's got the energy to think. There are all kinds of things. Maybe the breath might be a little bit too subtle, a little bit too uninteresting. Or you can think about the parts of the body. What have you got in this body? All different kinds of body parts. Start with the bones. See if you can visualize starting from the toes running on up, each bone in the foot, each bone in the leg, the hips, the spine, the shoulders, the arms, the, the skull. Remind yourself, yes, you've got this in your body as well. Then all the various organs. You just chase them down, think of what's in the different parts of the body. In other words, give the mind some work to do. If it's got that much energy, give it some work to do. Now part of it will say, well, I've actually got to worry about this other thing, this issue that might come up in the future. And if it's really something you have to think about, say, at the end of the hour, we'll think about it after the mind has had a chance to rest and get cleared inside. And then if it insists and says, no, right now, you remind yourself, you don't really know what's going to happen in the future. You can imagine all kinds of dangers. But what you do know is that a lot of unexpected things will happen, and you're, need, you're going to need a lot of mindfulness and alertness and discernment in order to deal with them. Where are you going to get those things? Through the practice. So you're not being irresponsible by not thinking about those issues. You've got this technique for getting the mind sharper. This technique works well with a lot of issues that you have in daily life, in terms of your job, your family. A problem comes up and it's good to sit down and say, okay, I want to think about this problem at the end of the hour. Pose the question in your mind and then put it aside. And if it comes up again at any time prior to the time you'd given for it, you say, Not yet, not yet, not yet. And you've got to be firm with it. So I need to develop my mindfulness. I need to develop my alertness. I need to develop my discernment. It's done by developing your concentration. It's not the case that mindfulness and concentration are two separate practices. The mindfulness is keeping something in mind. As the Buddha said, the themes of right concentration are the processes of establishing mindfulness. Like when you're with the breath. Where the breath in and of itself, you're ardent, in other words, you're trying to do this well. You're alert, you're watching what's going on, what you're doing in particular. Being in the present moment is not just whatever comes up. You want to see specifically, what am I doing, what are the results of what I'm doing? That's alertness. And then mindfulness itself is remembering what you've learned from the past about how to deal with issues. Putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. In other words, any distractions come up, you put them aside as best you can. So you can settle down with the breath. Well, that's the basic technique for getting the mind into concentration. So as you're trying to get the mind to settle down, you're going to be learning some things about the workings of the mind, which is what this is all about. Understand, what is my mind doing? That won't happen to us, but here is my mind creating trouble. I went to all that trouble to learn how to think, to learn how to use language, and those powers are taking over. What you've got to do is learn how to put them under your control. That's what the Buddha said, when you learn how to control your thinking, so that you think what you want to think and you don't think what you don't want to think. And at the same time, your taste in what you would want to think gets more refined. A lot of things that you used to like to think about, you begin to realize it's a lot of, a lot of garbage. And even though you could think about those things, you realize I, you don't want to think about them anymore. This is where the discernment comes in. Because the more you're able to use your discernment, and cutting through distracting thoughts, the easier it's going to be. Now there will come times when you simply have to use the power of your concentration, sort of as the technique of last recourse. Where the Buddha says you stick your tongue against the roof of your mouth, and, you, and he says you beat down your mind with your mind. In other words, you put pressure on it, 
and say, I will not think that thought. One good way of doing this is to think of a meditation word and just repeat it over and over again in the mind, really fast, rapid fire. And think of the whole body saying that meditation word. That requires a certain amount of force. It's a temporary stopgap measure. But when the air is clear, then you can relax a bit and then go back to that technique of just breathing through wherever a thought seems to be forming. So what you've got to deal with when you're dealing with restlessness is one, checking the level of energy in the mind. And then two, looking at what the mind has to say about why it wants you to think about these things, what excuses, what reasoning it gives, or why you shouldn't be with the breath or shouldn't be calm, why you've got to get worked up about something. So you deal with the energy level, you also deal with those arguments. And there are times if the mind is really stubborn, well, you can be stubborn too. You don't just give in. You've got to show your thoughts who's boss. And so in this way you get to know your mind better and you get to use it better as well. So particularly in that insight when you realize that all the thinking and planning and worrying sometimes actually makes the problem worse, whatever it is you're worried about. Or it's putting it aside for the time being, giving the mind a little space, giving the issue a little space. You can come back to it and you can see it a lot more clearly. And working with the breath gives you precisely the tools you need and the energy you need. so that you can take charge of your thoughts, and they don't take charge of you. <laughs>